Hi, it's uh, Paul Beckwith from the uh, University of Ottawa, and uh, I've done uh, videos recently of the changes that are under un, that are presently underway in the Arctic, um, the Arctic amplification, um, and also I've done a recent video on the El Nino, how that is developing. Um, so, so what I'd like to look at now is uh, what is happening around the Arctic in the over the ocean uh, basins. Uh, over the North Atlantic uh, Basin and the North Pacific Basin uh, because there's some very, very interesting um, things happening there and uh, especially in the North Pacific um, which is directly related, related to California's drought and uh, I haven't, um, I don't think we have a full understanding of how that relates to the big picture, what's causing it and so on. So um, I'm going to show you uh, some uh, data here. Um, there goes my monitor. Okay, so this is the um, this is the North Pacific uh, basin. So we've got North America over here. Uh, we've got Japan over here. This is the sea surface temperature anomaly. Um, so this region here is this blue area is colder than normal. Um, the anomaly is negative. Um, and then you get the uh, Kuroshio current coming up here, which is uh, off the coast of Japan and then across the ocean. And then these areas here are uh, warmer than normal. So this area is minus 3.6 degrees. The anomaly, this is over 4 degrees here. And it's also uh, very warm up here. Um, and then these red regions here are anomalies of 1.6 1, 1 degrees here. Um, just to give you some idea, um, a couple of degrees there. So we've got warm water over in this area, very warm water here, um, and then the, the cooler water. So um, on the, uh, in terms of the uh, North Atlantic Basin, um, we've got uh, the, jet, the, um, the Gulf Stream is coming up here meandering across and we've got more structure here than we do in the uh, Pacific. You know, it's a smaller basin, it's a narrower basin. This region here is minus 8.1 degrees C, uh, the anomaly negative. And then if we go over here, um, my pointer, I can get it going here. Um, this is uh, plus 3 degrees, this is plus you know, two degrees. So, so we've got this um, cold uh, pool here coming across um, the uh, ocean, and it's cutting into warmer ocean around. So, so this is similar in uh, in uh, both basins. Um, and if I look at the uh, temperature, it's, although the contrast between cold and warm in the water is larger in the Atlantic basin, um, if I look at the um, temperature, the sea surface temperature now, not the anomaly. Um, this is what you see. So, you know, the it, north of uh, Iceland, it's 8.4 degrees here. This, so there's warm water extending well up into the Arctic. Um, the water temperature um, down in this region is, uh, you know, about 16 degrees, almost 16 degrees. Of course, if we come down to these areas it's uh, 26 and a half degrees um, and there's some cold water so we've got some water coming off Greenland from melt coming down here off the coast of Canada coming out from Hudson's Bay um, which is the blue or blue you know just below slightly below zero so this is melt water coming through we've got the warm water pushing up um, so that's in the Atlantic Basin and then um, Getting back to the uh, Pacific Basin, look at this. This is where the anomaly is here of plus four degrees. Um, if I now go to uh, sea surface temperature uh, in this basin, uh, this is what we see. So, so uh, the blue is cooler than normal. Or oh, sorry, this is uh, sea surface temperature. So there'll be no reading here because this is ice. Okay, so there's no reading here. Um, if we come out here, um, this is 3.1 degrees Celsius. So this is meltwater coming, escaping from the Arctic. 
Um, there's uh, this is warmer water that's coming up from the uh, uh, coming up from below, um, and then uh, so you can see uh, you know minus eight, eight degrees C. You know this will be uh, let's see what it is sixteen. So you know fifteen odd to sixteen seventeen degrees, and then we get down here. This this water here is very warm. Um, and this is the part of the water that is sloshing across, um, creating the uh, El Nino. Um, so you can see the type of patterns here. Um, and uh, then we'll just look, we'll just focus now on the ocean currents. So this is showing the ocean currents clearly coming up the coast here, uh, past Japan, uh, the Kuroshio current you know, uh, point about a, just under a meter per second here, so it's very loopy. And then you get all these swirls and eddies extending across the Atlantic. Notice in this area where the large temperature anomalies are, there's very little motion of the current. It's hardly moving. Um, almost no motion at all. It's pretty still. And we've got this pocket of warm water that's sitting there. And it's been sitting there most of the winter, too, and it directly result, results in the drought in California. And I'll show you a bit more how um, in just a minute. Um, going back over to the Atlantic Basin, um, here we have the Gulf Stream uh, coming up here. Look how it's looping in the Gulf of Mexico right now. Really interesting. And then down around Florida, and then it's coming up the coast here, you know, splintering off. And there's pieces of it, chunks of it breaking off. Um, and then they propagate through surprisingly a long distance like something like this might evolve to this and this and this You know, and you can see it spreading you can even see signs of it spreading all the way over to Africa here and uh, These whirls and eddies extending all the way over to, to the UK um, and uh, uh, So you can see so we have a very similar situation in terms of the you know The, the two currents are analogous. We've got the Gulf Stream in the Atlantic and the Kuroshio current in the Pacific. Uh, this is the um, this is uh, surface winds. Okay, so uh, there's a low pressure area here. So we have a cyclone here, which is drawing in air here. So we're getting some motion. Uh, we're getting wind currents coming up here. Um, this is 38 kilometers an hour. It'll be a bit faster here. Um, 53 kilometers an hour. Um, and then, um, so, so you get this type of pattern, uh, coming off here. So there's, there, there's, uh, this is, this will be another, uh, low pressure area. Um, and I'll look at the pressures later. So this is the, uh, wind at the surface, um, over in the, uh, Pacific Basin. Um, here is what the winds look like, um. So there's more, um, there's some stronger winds, you know, the, the, the basin is much wider, of course, than the um, Atlantic, as I said. Um, so there's more, there's a, there's a cyclone here, um, and there's another one here, and there's another one here. So there's a bunch of, this is, this is a high pressure area, um, go spinning the other way, clockwise. So you see this type of thing now. Notice that this area here where the winds are very slow is where the warm pool is. Um, now we'll look at the uh, jet streams in the uh, Pacific here. So this is the jets. Um, so this pointer is where roughly centered on the warm pool. So the warm pool was over in this area here. So it's just so the, we have a pretty zonal um, jet stream flow, and there's a warm pool just south, um, just south of it. So, you know, you can see the jet stream flow. This is at 250 millibar, uh, 162 kilometers an hour over here, um, 257 kilometers an hour. So you can see what it's doing, but. So this is a, this is this really loopy jet stream. I mean, it's doing. There's all kinds of sub eddies. It's breaking into chunks, and uh, you know, it's doing these dips and swirls. It's very convoluted, very broken up. But it's much. You know, the the main strength is here, and then it splinters up into 
you know, more northerly one. And then we get the really strange behavior on the uh, on the Atlantic side, which we'll go over to. So, so again, this was the uh, surface winds on the Atlantic Basin side, and now um, this is the uh, jet streams on the Atlantic side. So you can contrast the difference. I mean, on the Pacific, the the the, the fastest winds were very zonal here they're extremely meridional and very very fractured and very broken up i mean this is uh this is not uh something's going on here i mean we know what's going on the arctic is warming temperature gradients decreasing but we're seeing a lot more because the basin's narrow and you get land sea contrast and the ocean's changing significantly you know, there's more ocean on the Pacific side, more water, so it's buffering the temperatures and the jets are um, not as contorted there, uh, but they are here. So this is the speed here, 176 kilometer an hour over here, um, 200 kilometer an hour, you know, and uh, then there's streaks here. You know, this is, uh, this will be slower, if I can get it. 80 kilometers this is uh, 120 so you know you see these streaks of, of area sections that are very very fast other sections that are slower but I mean look at the look at the spread over here I mean whenever it narrows up if it doesn't break off if it narrows up it'll be like a river you know you got water flowing down a river water's conserved so where the river narrows the currents faster you get the rapids where the river is wider the, uh, you get you get slower movement and also then you get more structure in the water flow if there's areas that are deeper and shallower. Um, so we'll call this part A and I'll continue in uh, part B. Thank you.